my name is Marion and my channel is called Thinking Out Loud. Remember to like, share and subscribe. Today I've got another video for you and it's about how to get into medical school so keep tuned and keep watching. I've got a few tips and tricks for you on how to optimise your application to medical school. Um, so to start off with I'll just let you know that I didn't get into medical school the first time round and I had to make a few changes to my application and we applied whilst I was doing a year of pharmacy at a different university um, to get in. So it can be quite hard, especially if you've got no experience of what the medical schools are looking for. And if you don't know anyone that's already in medical school that's been successful in getting in, it can be quite hard. Um, so I just put together everything that I did. I also helped my sister in her application to medical school and she got in the first time round. So hopefully you'll get in too. So number one is you need to sit, you need to think about the relevant exams that you need to sit. So there's two main exams, UK CAT and BMAT. Um, and each one of those um, depends on which medical school you're applying to. Um, so BMAT is more for Oxford, um, Royal College London, and then um, a few others which I'm not sure about. And then UK CAT is for most of the medical schools. There's a few medical schools that don't need any, um, which you just need to do your research. Um, and I think it's Bristol, um, Lancaster, uh, Liverpool and Birmingham. Don't need any examinations before you apply. Two, make sure you get the deadline right. So the deadline for medical school is a lot earlier than the other deadlines and I think it's in October um, every single year. So make sure you know the date that um, you need to submit your application by. So you can pick up to four medical schools and then you need to pick one um, non-medical um, degree that you want to apply for just in case you don't get any offers, which hopefully you will. Um, if you don't get any offers, you've got something to fall back on, which is always a positive. Make sure that you've got a lot of experience. Um, it can be quite hard and people are quite daunted by experience, but actually... Um, you can make it simple so you can break up the experience into one experience shows that you've got a caring nature that you um, work well with other people so that can be either you volunteer in places like a care home you can volunteer in a GP practice or shadow a GP that's really good you can volunteer in a hospital if you're lucky enough to get some work experience but that's not essential um, and if you go abroad at all, make see if you can go into the local hospital, local, um, anywhere that's doing any charity work. You, you can always work there as well. Um, the other type of experience is um, do something that you enjoy. So um, if you enjoy a certain type of sport, try and take that up. Try and become sort of the team captain. Try um, and compete somewhere. Try and get really involved into a sport. It doesn't have to be a sport. It could be... Um, if you like playing music, um, sort of excelling at that, if you like any hobbies that you like to do, so if you like reading in particular, yeah, maybe yeah. have a go at uh, maybe entering any reading competitions, I'm not sure, I'm not an avid reader so I'm not sure, but the point is try and get involved in one of your hobbies that you really like enjoy doing uh, and that will show off in the interview because you'll be able to be quite passionate about it, uh, talk about it quite easily and explain sort of what you've achieved with that. One of the biggest things is you need to write your personal statement. So start writing your personal statement early. A lot of um, colleges and sixth forms have got a lot of help and support from your staff. So um, tutors and things will help you write your personal statement. I had very little support, so um, I had to sort of write my personal statement, send it to give it to my dad to look over, and then he sent it to his friends, and they had a look, and I didn't get in anyway. Um, but then the second time, I just wrote it myself, reviewed it, and there were some key things. Um, so the key things for writing your personal statement is number one, make it personal. So actually, write about experience that you've had. Um, that is true don't ever lie in your personal statement because it'll come across in the interview so just don't make anything up so make it personal so try and split it up what have you done um, healthcare wise that shows genuine commitment to medicine number two um, what do you uh, do for in terms of your hobbies or what do you like to do to wind down and that's really important because it'll help show them how you are a well-rounded person and how you can deal with stress 
um, and that might be a question that might come up. Um, number three, talk about uh, any achievements you've got in uh, sixth form or in secondary school or sort of if you're applying as a postgrad, um, any experience or from your your degree that you might have done beforehand. Mm -hmm. Another good thing that you could do is actually if you've had any um, real life experiences, so from yourself, if you suffer from any condition um, or from any relatives, any siblings, any parents, anyone at all that you've sort of been involved in their medical care, that's really sort of something that is unique to you and that you can actually write in your personal statement. You can sort of say um, what you've learned about dealing with that disease or condition, it doesn't have to be a disease but it can be um, a condition um, and how sort of involved you've been and how that's affected you and how then that is something that you want to be able to give back to the community. So. Um, what you've learned from doing that and that's a really key thing so everything that you say one of the key things that we do quotes um, is anything that you write down in your personal statement make sure you reflect on it so let's say um, you went to Uganda amazing um, to go on safari well so what is what they're gonna think so make sure you write uh, another statement that reflects that so this taught me um, I was able to go out with a group of friends um, and we were able to go out on safari and care for some of the animals. Um, then you can put this taught me how to um, this taught me good teamwork because I had to be able to manage not only humans but also people communicating with them and deciding um, on who was going to feed which animal etc. Basically the key word there is the teamwork and basically you're reflecting on it by saying I went and did this but then this is what it taught me and then that's something that then they will see that you can bring to their medical school so that's really key. I have actually got my sister's personal statement here which I'm going to read out so uh, I'm just going to read out some a few things. Um, so here's one. Um, I, I, at uh, every opportunity, I enjoy keeping up to date with medical affairs. Um, I've been inspired by many of the medical professionals and new medical breakthroughs I see on TED Talks and hope to focus my EPQ on some of these aspects. I think EPQ is one of our projects. Um, these have opened me up to new perspectives of different fields of medicine. Have and have shown me how the pursuit of excellence, hard work and great ambition can transform the medical landscape. Now I think um, basically the point is she sort of said that she enjoy, she does enjoy watching lots of videos <laughs> including TED Talks but then by watching these TED Talks she's been able to sort of focus on one topic, use it as a basis for her EPQ which is one of her subject areas um, and then it helps, she's written, she's reflecting on that saying it's opened me up to new perspectives of different fields of medicine and show me how the pursuit of excellence, hard work and great ambition can transform the medical landscape. So that's just one of them. Another thing is she's put, during my GCSEs I became the year group representative on the student council, a role which required me to channel and take forward any issues the rest of the year had within the academy. During my A-level studies, I have enjoyed voluntary work, work, voluntary work mentoring year 7 and 11 students in English, reading and science. This has enabled me to develop my management, teaching and perhaps most importantly, communication skills. So she's, she sort of said what she's done and then she's reflected on that. Helping and supporting people and seeing the gratitude on their face is what motivates me and I know a career in medicine encompasses all of this. So it's all just showing that she's got a caring attitude and actually um, that's something she can take forward into medicine. Another key thing, what you need to make sure is, um, once you do get an interview, um, make sure that you brush up on health recent healthcare topics. So, so one topic that's um, really in the news at the moment is about mental health um, and I think there's a few um, charities I think led by the Royals um, that are talking about mental health so if I went to interview now I would definitely bring that up and start talking about mental health because it just shows that you actually care about healthcare, you're actually keeping yourself up to date which is crucial if you're studying medicine and actually after you finish, after you've graduated. Um, so it's just sort of make sure you keep in touch with um, medical news you can do that on, online so sort of. you can go on bbc website you can go on sort of any news website um, but you can also sort of follow ted talks is a really good uh, resource for you to use as well um, and then just keeping up to date through um, if you've got access to any medical journals so 
the BMJ Medical Journal has always got hot topics um, that they pick each week. Um, so if you've got access to that, then that's great. If you don't, um, then just keep... The, the news has always got a lot of um, healthcare topics for. And always try and pick a topic that you're interested in. So um, if you're particularly interested in dementia or if you're particularly interested in asthma care, then um, you could even tailor your work experience to that. Um, and then also like sort of reading up on that, read up on how recent advances in that, and then you've got something to talk about in interview. If you've got an interview, what you need to make sure hundred percent that you do is read up on the medical school. It might sound silly, it might like it might sound obvious, but actually. Um, if you don't know the structure of the medical school, so what you need to know is what the structure of the medical school is like in terms of are they problem based learning or are they um, mixed, so lecture based and problem based learning, so integrated I think is what it's called, or are they just lecture based um, because that is very, each one is quite different. Um, so you need to make sure that you understand how they like to teach and that because they might ask you why do you want to go to their medical school and you might be particularly attracted to how that they teach their students so maybe you enjoy solving things so problem based learning would be excellent for you um, or you actually like to sort of sit um, and get the information given to you so you can absorb it go away and read over it so lecture based or you can have a mix of the two which is integrated um, the second thing is what is a medical school like so is it a big um, research medical school um, that's close to very large teaching hospitals um, which means that so they might specialize in something so I think um, so like in Newcastle I think they specialize in neuroscience um, and you might get a question related to that or that like it might be quite interesting that if you're interested in sort of dementia care or something that's related to their medical school and then they might sort of get excited um, so just know sort of uh, anything unique for that medical school the other thing is make sure you know what the um, school so the university is like so is it a campus based university or is it spread across the city so it's just everywhere um, because that can really change things. So a campus based university is quite it's a what usually um, away from the city everything is on the campus so you don't have to ever leave um, and some people might prefer that because sort of you just set up shop there and that's it but other people might like it that it's across the city and you're integrated with the locals so you need to see that the other thing is um, think about um, the distance that you have to travel so uh, at my medical school um, we were we would always have some placements about an hour away um, from the medical school so you need to think about that so in third fourth and fifth year you'd always have placements an hour away um, they did provide accommodation but some of the medical schools might not provide the accommodation so you need to think about are you happy to make that commute um, are you happy to keep relocating um, because that can make a big difference um, the other thing that you need to think about is what is that interview structure like so interview structure is it traditional interview structure where it's one-on-one -on -one? so you sit down um, you've usually got one or two uh, people on the panel and they're asking you questions usually so around your um, personal statement what you've written in there and they're just asking you about that and then they're gonna ask you some general questions why do you want to study medicine why do you want to come to this university or is it um, multiple mini interviews so mul multiple mini interviews is basically where you go around different stations um, and each station is different. So you might have one station where they're asking you traditional interview questions, why do you want to study medicine, why do you want to come to this university? Then you'll have other stations. So a station might be on statistics, um, like sort of interpreting a simple graph and then being able to basically spot what's on that graph also explaining it to somebody it might be with patient interaction so you might have some actors there and they want to see how you interact with patients and what your bedside manner is like um, or you might have one where you have to basically um, follow a set of instructions or explain something 
So explain some instructions in a diff difficult situation. So you might have somebody that is um, deaf and you have to ask them how to do something. These are just examples I'm making up, so um, don't take them to word. And the last thing is, definitely be proactive, but definitely don't be overactive. So um, try your best, work hard um, in preparing uh, for pre-interview, so uh, when you're making the application, but also um, when you get an interview, uh, preparing for that, but make sure that you, your whole life isn't encapsulated in this interview. At the end of the day, um, you could practice a lot and then um, mess it up when you get to the interview and you could practice a little bit and actually when you get to the interview you do quite well because you, you're just that type of person. So basically be proactive but don't be overactive is my key point. So that's it, good luck. I'm going to bring some more detailed videos in terms of some of the things that I've said, sort of focus on maybe personal statement um, and then you can't be Matt. Um, but other than that, like, share and subscribe and I wish you good luck with the interview. Bye!